Hey y'all, Data Guy here. And today I have a video for you uh, showing you how you can use Airflow and AWS Data Sync to sync data between two different S3 buckets. Um, so useful when you, know, you want to make sure you have the same data in two different places, whether it's for verification purposes, whether you're just trying to copy data from one team to another so they can use it, um, or you know, just moving storage location. A lot of different reasons why you might want to use some kind of copy utility or a data sync to make sure data is the same between two S3 buckets. Um, but you decide that for your use case, I'm just going to show you how you can actually do it. Um, so today I'm going to show you how we can use Airflow, AWS data sync and AWS S3 buckets uh, to sync the data between those two S3 buckets. Uh, so without further ado, we're going to get started, create a new Airflow environment, bring in some requirements and packages, um, and then build our DAG. So without further ado, let's get into it. So the first thing we're going to do is set up our Airflow environment. Um, so we'll open up Terminal, um, and we will see into desktop, repos, make a new repo called AWS Data Sync. Oh, sorry, make directory, not CD, AWS Data Sync. And then what we'll do within here is CD into that and run astro dev init. And this will just build a uh, local Airflow uh, repository using Astro. Um, so then we'll open this. And within the requirements file that it is going to generate, we are going to just want to install our Amazon provider. Uh, since all the tools we're using with are Amazon tools, we don't need to actually import anything else. Um, everything else will just be covered by the base Airflow uh, imports. So save this, then go to our DAGs folder and hit new DAG. And we'll just call this AWS data sync DAG.py. And now we can get started building our DAG. Um, so the first thing we're gonna do as we do with all of our DAGs is import a whole list of packages and libraries. Um, so we're gonna import annotations, date time, 023, which is basically a way Python wrapper for interacting with AWS services, uh, task decorators, chain base operator, um, the DAG model, just Airflow DAG model. Uh, then we're going to have our data sync operator, since that's the primary uh, point of this video, is showing you how to use data sync. Uh, then we have our S3 create bucket and S3 del delete bucket operator, and just you know, so we can create and delete S3 buckets. Um, as part of this, just we can show you a couple different ways of interacting with them. Uh, then we also have the trigger rules, so we can use the more advanced trigger rules uh, included within Airflow. And uh, this AWS testing utility, what we'll just use for authentication here. If you don't want to use this, don't do it. Um, you can always just you replace uh, where it is using um, this context builder uh, and with just your own uh, AWS credentials. But I'm just going to use it here because that's what AWS, AWS seems to like to push. Um, then what we'll do is create two variables. Um, so our variables will be DAG ID, example data sync, and just whatever your role ARN is from your uh, from the role that you're going to provision within AWS to have access to both data sync um, and the S3 buckets you're going to use. So make sure whatever connection you're using, uh, the, they are using a role that has access to uh, manipulate both of those services within AWS. Otherwise, this DAG isn't going to work. Next, we're going to build our system context using that role ARN key. So this is going to just basically give us the context to authenticate and give us the ability to interact with AWS without explicitly defining the connection details. Um, then what we're going to do is create our first task function, which is just going to be a function that's going to get a given S3 buckets ARN so we can use that later on in the DAG to actually access that tool. Um, then what we're going to do next, so this is just very simple. It's going to bring in the bucket name and then cert return uh, the bucket name in ARN format. So we can use that uh, to identify within AWS. Then our next task we're going to create is the create location task. Um, and so what this task is going to be doing is using the S AWS Bluetooth 3 client to create a data sync location for an S3 bucket. Um, and this is necessary for data sync operations. You need to define a location, um, and the location is just kind of an object within data sync um, to define, hey, we're look, I want to look at this location and you know another location. Um, so it can't just read an S3 bucket on its own. You need to define an S3 bucket actually as a uh, data sync location. Then what we're going to do is create our first task that isn't just a function. 
And so here we have our create source location. So here we're going to read in our bucket source and the role ARN and then return create location. So here, this is just a task that's calling this create location function uh, with the bucket source and role ARN parameters. Then we're also going to use that create location function again. And this is why we didn't just create it as a function to create a de destination location as well. This time passing in the bucket destination as well as the role ARN again for authentication. Um, so here, and that's what's happening in this S3 config is it's using that role ARN to, to authenticate. Um, and so now we've created both of the locations for our two S3 buckets within data sync. Uh, next, what we're gonna wanna do is create another task. Uh, in this case, what this task is going to do is uh, create a data sync task. It's going to synchronize the data between our source and destination locations. Um, so here within, within data sync outside of like an airflow task, there's also the concept of tasks uh, where we, you know, you want to sync data between two locations. If you run a sync job, that is a sync data sync task. And so here we're again using that boot to three client for data sync to create a task, uh, passing in our source location and our destination location that we created previously, and then returning uh, the unique identifier for that particular task run within data sync. Next, after that, what we're going to do is have a delete task, which is going to uh, delete that task after the data has been synced. We're going to then delete that task uh, based on the ARN that we return from here. So after you know this is a sync, we have the task that we can ARN that we can verify that is done correctly. We're then going to use this trigger rule, trigger rule all done, to delete that task after it has completed, um, so that we're not just having a long living task uh, per you know just kind of sitting there in within data sync. Um, then we're also going to delete a task created by the operator here. Um, so here, second, this is also going to uh, delete, um, just clean up our, all of our tasks um, within data sync after we're all done. So you'll see later on one of the final tasks is actually running a data sync job with that job ID with these different locations. Um, and this is going to delete that task after it has been completed successfully. Then what we're going to do is create a task that is going to list the different locations based on a given search filter. Um, so here, what's happening is we're basically, again, using that boot 3 data sync client and then listing all locations uh, for our bucket source, destination, um, test, and test create. Um, so just listing out all the different S3 bucket locations that we might be using here. Um, so you just have them all available in uh, one single location. Um, so you can just see, hey, these are where all the operations are ending up. Uh, if you need to reference that down, down, downstream of this uh, DAG, actually. Then again, we're going to do another cleanup operation here, just delete location. So here we're deleting those locations we created previously. Again, just pure cleanup operations using the Bluetooth 3 data sync connection um, and just making sure that you know after we're done, our data sync environment is nice and tidy. Um, so now that we've defined our task API tasks, we can then define our DAG. So here we're going to pass that DAG ID that we defined earlier, create a DAG with just basic schedule, catch up false, uh, nothing really to, of note here. We're going to initialize the test context so that we can uh, actually connect to uh, systems downstream. Um, so that's how we're going to be then connecting within these S3 bucket source and destination. So here we're passing in our test context uh, to get our data sync uh, bucket source and uh, bucket destination. Um, and this environment ID key is going to be whatever your environment um, ID key is, your, C, uh, pri your private key is for your AWS resources that's associated with that role A or N role. So you'll want to substitute that in there. Um, and then we're going to create a S3 bucket uh, and our S3 source and destination. So here, two tasks at once, two tasks, the price of fun. Uh, we have our S3 create bucket operator and our S3 create bucket operator again, um, just creating two different buckets uh, for our source and destination. Then we are defining those source locations using our uh, fun destination and cr or create source and create destination functions. So here passing in test context uh, to authenticate. Again, sub this out for an AWS connection if you don't want to use the test context and roll your end keys. Um, and here you just define your S3 source and bucket locate and destination bucket locations. Then we are going to create task ARNs for these different tasks. So again, just calling that create task uh, function we defined up here. So you can see here, just creating our tasks in the data, uh, within data sync. And then we are going to execute 
our task it, our ID. So here, to actually run a data sync task, even though we've created it, you also need to trigger it using the data sync operator. So here we're passing our task ARN, giving it a task ID, and this will actually run the task that we created. It won't just run on its own, which is something you, important to know. Um, and by default, data sync will wait. Um, so if you want to uh, not wait, if you want to change that configuration, you can say, hey, wait for completion equals false, and then downstream tasks will continue to trigger um, regardless of what happened within that data sync task. As long as it's triggered properly, then downstream tasks will propagate. So up to you based on your use case, whether or not you want to enable this. Um, then you also, and this is just, I'm going to show you a couple different ways of how you can execute these tasks. So this is like the most simplest by ARN. You can also execute the task by locations. Um, so here, the, the data sync operator, I can say, hey, I want to execute a task uh, based on the fact that it's going to include the source and this destination. Um, and this will only execute tasks, in this case, the only task that includes the source and destination, um, and just run them that way. Um, and then there is another way you can do it, um, which is uh, fully within a data sync operator task. So this is basically condensing everything we did into a single task definition. So here within your data sync operator, you are defining a source location, destination, uh, create tasks, uh, KWARGs, the source location. So here you're defining everything we defined previously to create these source location, destination locations, but just doing it within the context of this particular task. Um, so here you can see everything is created and it runs um, all at once uh, using the data sync operator. So you can kind of pick and choose how you want to actually uh, run your data sync jobs, whether it's on the ARN, whether it's based on source destination location, or if you just want to junk it all into one big operator, you have that choice as well. It really depends on, you know, hey, what do you, what, what, what would you prefer? Um, then we also have our locations tasks. So just defining our locations, listing locations, deleting locations, just initializing those functions that we just created earlier. Um, and then we're also going to define our delete bucket operator. So cleaning up uh, this key trigger rule all done. So making sure all previous tasks are done before we actually run the delete bucket operations. And then finally, we are going to chain it all together with the chain function. Um, and so here you go. You have the chain function, which is going to show uh, each of these tasks uh, step by step. Um, it just makes it really easy to kind of chain together a bunch of tasks. You're not just doing bitmap, 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 bitmap. Uh, so. That is all I have for you today. Just want to show you a few different ways you could use data sync along with Airflow to synchronize data between two S3 locations. Um, I hope you learned a lot. I've learned a good amount uh, doing this. This is you know, a cool little function. Um, and it is interesting how everyone uses the task terminology now. Uh, but above all else, I hope you learned something. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Data guy out. Peace.